Thank you. Uh, as you see, uh, the talk is about going to be about deep learning. So I hope that uh, you have some familiarity because uh, we don't have time to cover like basics and that kind of stuff. So it's going to be a little rough in that sense. And um, it's going to be a little bit about JAX. Uh, I don't expect people to have knowledge of JAX, but I'm going to try to show you what might be different from other frameworks. And really just do like a magic trick and show you, hey, like it works. Um, uh, well, the talk is by me, Cristian Garcia, and David Cardoso, who gave me feedback. Uh, so who am I? I am a machine learning engineer. I work at Quantsite on open source. Uh, specifically, I work with uh, Google uh, full time on the JAX and Flax project. So yeah, I'm a little bit involved in the JAX world uh, full time. Um, hey, uh, better. Better. Okay. So yeah, I'm a little bit like a JAX uh, fanboy, and I uh, work full time on these kind of technologies. Uh, so we're gonna talk about model scaling. So. I guess the important question for most of the time is actually when to scale a model. Uh, and there, there are kind of two common answers. The first one is when you want to speed up training. So if you have like too much data and you want to consume it faster, so you might want to train, uh, give data to different machines and try them to finish up the training faster. Second time is big models, like if you want to uh, train a, like a GPT kind of model, uh, if it doesn't fit on a single GPU, TPU, uh, you're going to need to scale it up to like a, like a cluster and both. And <laughs> really both is what you have in practice. So you have too much data and you have big models. That's kind of a regime that we're going to be dealing with here. So it's a, it's a little bit niche because most big companies are kind of the people who spend time on these regimes. Uh, and we're going to answer why, what do we need to train like uh, models of billions of parameters. Uh, like what, what, uh, obviously there's a ton of engineering, but we're going to try to see like the, like the basics, like uh, baby steps into, into this world. So we're going to talk about, these are going to be like the concepts we're going to use throughout the talk. Uh, sharding. So, uh, what, what, what do we have? We have a mesh of devices. So, that could be, let's say, a TPU or a GPU uh, pod. Let's call it pod. It's usually one of these. Let, imagine a, a machine with eight GPUs, something like that. That's kind of a typical scenario. Uh, and we have like a, a, an array. So, whatever array, tensor, whatever you want to see it. Uh, and we're going to see how uh, we're going to distribute uh, this array into, into uh, a pod, or let's call it a pod for now. But uh, in Jack's terminology, we call this like a, like a local mesh. Uh, so so for, for this example, we have eight devices. Uh, and we also have to consider the mesh topology. So for eight, you can have these four topologies. So uh, linear, uh, we could have uh, uh, 4 by 2, 2 by 4, or uh, 8 by 1. That's kind of the only choices. This becomes relevant when you're uh, hyper-optimizing your, your execution. But for now, we just know that we have a mesh, and meshes have topologies. And we have an array. So let's say, I mean, it, it's four, uh, 8 by 4 just because it's visually interesting, but Imagine it's huge. So we, ha we have like a huge array. Uh, so we're going to shard it. So l like what we're going to do, and this is going to be very visual, we're, we're just going to shard it like put each bit in in each device. So if we have this array in this mesh, this is going to be a distributed array. So we, we did like a like a very simple operation of, the, of just passing like, like the bits to the different uh, devices. And that's what, that's kind of the distributor array, what we get. Uh, note that locally they have a shape. 
so so locally they have like a one by four shape, but globally they still have their eight uh, by four shape. So um, if, if we change the domain topology and we keep the same sharding strategy, then uh, we get this uh, same distributor, right? So it's still eight by four, but now uh, the local shards are two by two. So this is kind of what sharding uh, means. Um, if we just do like a like straightforward uh, like sharding, but we can also have replication. So so it, it, sharding it, like not only involves put it, putting it how however it fits, but you can also say okay, I I want to not shard in a certain dimension. I want to replicate. So this means that uh, instead of uh, like uh, dividing it in the let's say y uh, in the second axis we are going to replicate it so we we get a uh, the still the global array is a uh, eight by four but locally we have like a like a two by four so that's kind of the rules that we use for array shardings and the terminologies uh, and we're going to see some code so <laughs> we're going to see how to do this in jax uh, i'm not requiring that you're going to be familiar with Jax, but just, just you're going to see what we did in, in, in code. So he, he, here are some imports. Uh, maybe I should clear all the, uh, blah, 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 clear all the, okay, I'm not going to clear all the cells, but uh, what's going to happen? We, we're just going to create a, a, a eight by four uh, array. And Jax has this uh, debug function, and it's going to show us how it's charted. So if we just create an array. It, it tells us it's just on CPU zero, so it's not charted. Uh, but it's it's still interesting to know that well, Jax is giving us the device placement information. So uh, now we're gonna we're gonna do the same within the slides. So I'm I'm gonna skip over a lot. Uh, the slides contain kind of the idea of what we're doing, uh, but some of the Jax idioms are kind of too specific for this talk. Uh, we're going to create a mesh, and the mesh is going to be a uh, two by four. So it, it's going to be the, the like two two by four mesh, the uh, horizontal one. And uh, in, in in Jax, we're going to name each uh, dimension of of the of the mesh, so we can then tell it how to either sharded or replicated in each dimension. Uh, and we're just going to say something like, OK, our, our previous un uncharted array, uh, please uh, put it in, in, the, in the mesh, basically. Uh, and here we're going to tell how to shard it. This is like a mini language, but we're just going to tell it sharded in the A dimension and then the B dimension. So if we do that, uh, we get uh, now that uh, it's well, <laughs> Jax gives us three pictures. It's charted on both dimensions, and uh, the the global shape is still eight by four, but the local uh, shape is four by one. So so just so we we get the the picture. Uh, I think we're dealing with this case, if I'm not mistaken. So. Uh, this is what we did, and it's it's, it's like uh, Jax idioms uh, make it pretty easy. Uh, we can also do the uh, four by two, and uh, just by sh by changing the the mesh topology and 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 executing the same code, uh, we now get the array sharded. So now you see that it's. Uh, the the shard shape is two by two, so it it was the second case we saw uh, in the slides, and finally we're gonna see replication. So we're same, we're gonna have a four by two mesh, but now as in the slides, we're gonna replicate on the on the second dimension, and that is just set, uh, done by setting none. So it won't shard; it will replicate, and then we will have uh, that. The I didn't print the lo uh, the shard shape, but we're gonna have that. Uh, it's gonna tell us that the 
each each array is going to be in two devices at the same time because it's replicated on that on that dimension. So hopefully the JAX part is not that confusing, but uh, it tells us that JAX can handle this kind of uh, logic very natively. Uh, I don't think it's that this easy to do it like in in TensorFlow and or, or, or PyTorch. JAX is built for scale, so so it makes it very easy. Uh, so next, we're going to see how to scale a model. And <laughs> we're going to see a very simple model uh, for two reasons. One, because it it's obviously makes it easier to demo. But second, and the, the model we're going to see is, is like a basic uh, MLP, which is just going to be like a linear uh, gel and another linear. So why is this interesting? Why do we care like a, a simple MLP? This Simple MLP happens to be uh, one of the blocks of the transformer. So there's actually many papers studying how to scale this specific MLP. Um, so that, that's why it's interesting. Uh, so let's just jump in and, and create it in, in JAX. Uh, there, there, there are frameworks like Flex, which is the one I work on, but I'm going to do it in pure JAX just so it's very transparent. Like what is happening? So uh, we're going to create like an init function, and we're just going to create uh, two weights. So, so we we have two linears, and for each linear, we're going to create like its weights. Uh, no, we're not going to use uh, biases. So we're just going to create w one and w two, and uh, initialize them according to their shapes. And then we're going to create the forward. So the forward is going to be super simple, just like. Uh, matrix multiplication with the input uh, using W1, then the, the gel activation function, and then a W2. So th this is going to be the model, basically. Um, and here, here, here we just um, initialize it, and the, the parameters of this model is, is yeah, just uh, W1 with this shape, W2 with this other shape, and that is it. Uh, and j just to show you how training in JAX is done, I'm not going to go deep into this, but uh, we're going to create our, uh, an optimizer from a library called Optax. Don't worry about that. Uh, we're going to have the state of the optimizer created by, by the library. And we're going to create a, a train set function, which we're going to compile with uh, JAX JIT. And what we do is we create like a loss function. Uh, with params as input, we differentiate the loss function with respect to the params. So that gives us our gradient. And then we do some updates. And th that updates the optimizer state and the parameters. And we return like the new parameters and optimizer state. Uh, this is how you do things in JAX. I'm going to skip through it because um, this is not like a, like, like, really like a Jack's talk, but we're, we're just to give you an idea of how you structure programs in um, in Jax, and yeah, there there we have like our we did one step of training for for our model, uh, and so okay, the next step is parallel training, uh, data parallel training. So there, there's when you scale a model, there's like various strategies. Uh, the first one, or the yeah, the first one that historically came up is okay. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm gonna put the same model in each device, but I'm gonna feed the model a uh, different chunks of data, and then uh, I'm gonna try to make like a consolidation of of of, of the parameters such that uh, they they keep in sync. So. What, what does this look like? So, so if, if we have, yeah, we have, uh, we have a, this data, these parameters, these gradients, and always the optimizer state. So, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna put the parameters and the optimizer state uh, replicated on all devices uh, for parallel, uh, data parallel training. And what we're gonna do is that we're gonna feed different data to each device. So I just denoted it by the color. And how does training look? So 
if, if we use the data and the parameters, we get gradients, right? That, that's kind of what you, the process uh, you get. But what happens? Uh, because the data is different, the gradients are going to be different on each uh, device. So uh, we're going to have, yeah, different gradients that accord to the data. And what we usually will want to do is use the gradients to update both the op optimizer state and the parameters, but we can't because that would give us different parameters and different optimizer state. So what we have to do is average the gradients. Uh, this is called a, like all reduce. Uh, and if we average a gradient across the devices, we suddenly get the same uh, gradients now. So they, and if we have the same gradients, uh, now we can like uh, update the optimizer state and the parameters. So th th the strategy is basically fit different data and synchronize the gradients and other stuff uh, such that when you do the parameter updates, uh, they all update to the same values. And, and that way you have the same replicated model. So that is data parallel training. <laughs> uh, let's see how to do it in, uh, in JAX. Um, so I'm, I'm going to do it with this primitive called chart map, which is a little bit experimental, but um, it's what it's the future basically. Um, there's one that's called parallel map, which is kind of what you should use right now. But uh, I'm making this talk future proof. So chart map uh, allows us to what it says, chart, like like cre create create charts and then map into each shard, uh, which basically execute a function per device. So we're gonna, what we are going to do, uh, I'm gonna skip a little bit because of the DAX specifics. We're gonna create a linear mesh, so just eight devices in line, and we're gonna try to feed each device different data. Um, and the parameters, we're going to try to replicate them. So if you remember from when we were sharding, we had this P and then we put stuff. We're going to put none, so the, uh, the parameters uh, replicate. And for the optimizer state, uh, well, this is a little bit complicated, but this is the optimizer state for IAM. Ignore it a little bit. It's going to have the same uh, like replication or shard sharding as, as the parameters. So yeah, we're just going to replicate it. But the data, we're going to shard it in the data dimension. So so here, we created some axis names. And well, we only have one, and it's going to be called data. Surely there should be a comma there. Uh, so we're going to split uh, the data in its first axis. So in the batch, the, the batches, we're going to send uh, mini batches to, to, to different devices. And we're going to use a shard map, ignore a little bit of what's happening here, but uh, TLDR, the prompts are going to be, the, and the prompts and the optimizer state are going to be replicated. The data, it's going to be sharded. And uh, basically, we're going to be, yeah, we're going to be doing this. So, we're going to calculate some gradients, but what we're interested in is in this part. How do we average? So in JAX, is pretty easy. <laughs> uh, you just use uh, the p-min function, which is called like parallel mean. And you, you, you say, OK, axis name data. So uh, in JAX, this is very trivial. So if you've done in other frameworks, you have to do stuff here. It's just do like a parallel mean. In the, in the data that I mentioned, and, and that is it. This is going to synchronize our gradients, and then we're just going to keep the same code as we had before, and that will work. Uh, if we run this code, what is going to be of interest, uh, the, for, for the inputs, the global shape is 16 by 32, but on each device, it's going to be uh, 2 by 32, so we're, we're splitting it in 8. And if we look at the final shardings of the params, we're going to see that the params are actually replicated. So that, that is data parallel. So we, we, with this, we're just verifying that we are 
in fact, uh, replicating the state of the parameters and the optimizer. Uh, if you have questions, maybe at the end uh, I can answer specifics. Uh, so that is one way to do it. In this way, we manually synchronize the gradients. Uh, one thing about JAX is that it has a compiler, and the compiler can do compiler stuff which looks like magic. So we're actually going to uh, do the same, but with a primitive called PJIT, which is now just named JIT. But wh what is the idea? With a PJIT, you're going to say, you're going to say, OK, uh, I, I want this. And you're going to instruct, please lock this. Please remember, like, please make sure that you, in the program, uh, make sure that the sharding I gave you, you respect it. So what 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 is it going to be? You're going to shard the, the data, but you're going to replicate the parameters. And then we're just going to execute the code, and we're not going to tell it anything about the gradient. But it will have to deduce the distributed program for how to optimally calculate the gradients, and if it's smart, it will just do the same pmin, but we're not going to specify it. That's going to be the difference. So compiler magic, and that's kind of what we're going to see. So same situation, eight devices in a linear mesh. Uh, I, I created a function to make something simpler, but again, uh, params replicated because we're saying none, data sharded because we're saying data. So same situation as we have before, but the difference is going to be, OK, we're just using JIT. And uh, no notice that I am not doing anything else. Uh, the, the Well, there's two things. Uh, I'm just here, I'm just telling it like, because I want to be helpful, I can also tell it like, hey, the, the gradients should be sharded uh, the same as the data. But we can actually comment this and have it deduce what the gradients should be. So uh, just like as a magic trick, we're just going to, we're just going to shard the data as we did at the beginning. And we're going to pass this through JIT. And it will deduce the distributed program. So <laughs> what this looks is like a normal function, like you would run locally. Like the f this is actually the same function I ran the first time, just to show you how training was done. Uh, and if we run it, we're going to see for the output. OK, we're going to see inputs. They're sharded. So we're doing data parallel. That's nice. And the output params. They are replicated, but we didn't do anything. It deduced how to distribute the whole program, so it's like a magic trick. Um, if you understand a little bit what is happening, this is magic because we, we didn't have to, to do anything. And as I told you, if we want to help it, because compilers can go wrong sometimes, we can help it by, by putting constraints. That's kind of what we can do to help it, but otherwise, it is usually just a smart. Uh, so, <laughs> if you want to take something, well, Jax compiler is really smart. That, that's kind of what is the end uh, result. Uh, so, next we're going to take it up a, a level and we're going to do more power, and this kind of the last thing uh, we're going to do. Um, more power is we want to. Now, instead of splitting the data, we want to split the model into different devices. So this is kind of what you get if you have like a huge model and you want to use multiple devices because it doesn't fit. So this is our model, uh, like like the matrix multiplication, then the the jelly, and then the the other matrix multiplication. So we're gonna do a little math, uh, and we're going to do a little bit of sharding and, and see what happens. So we're going to say, OK, uh, some, some, a paper 
discovered that the optimal strategy to to use of how to shard uh, our weights W1 and W2, which here I'm calling A and B, is to shard a, a in the column dimensions and B in the row dimension. So we're going to see why. So let's say we do that. Let's say we shard, we use this sharding uh, strategy. So what is going to happen? So if we just take a look at Y, which is kind of this intermediate step of just the yellow, uh, the yellow and the uh, matrix multiplication, we're, we're going to see that this operation is in fact equivalent to just uh, multiplying a, a1 uh, times the like the product with the data and then applying the yellow and concatenating it with uh, the same operation but with uh, a2. So the, the, this is equivalent. Uh, so, so we get now our like uh, matrix. Uh, well, y, but y is composed of y1 and y2 uh, in splitting the uh, columns dimension, and so our model is C. If we, if we kind of uh, extract the the yellow part, it's going to be y times b. But what is y times b? Y times b is really like y1 and y2 multiplied by b1 and b2. And if you do the math, <laughs> you're going to see that this is actually y1 times well the product uh, b1 plus uh, y2, uh, the product b2. And what is interesting here is that uh, they all happen on different devices. So uh, b basically, what we can do is that we can compute this whole thing on a device, and this whole other thing, and this only depends on 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 a one and and b one, and this other thing only depends on a a a two and b two, and we're gonna do the whole uh, model on different devices, and at the end we're gonna do the addition, but the addition is an all reduce, so. This sharding strategy is optimal because it can be, it minimizes communication between devices. Uh, so that is kind of what the paper says. So how do we, sorry, how do we implement this in, in JAX? Um, I'm just going to redefine the, the forward pass to do some visualizations of the intermediate so we verify that we actually get what we the, the shardings we said the intermediate step would get uh, but otherwise uh, okay now, now we're gonna have the same linear mesh but we're gonna put it just in the model dimension so so we're gonna name the dimension model and as we said uh, we're gonna split w1 in we're gonna like split it in the second dimension so just as a so y1 is a in, in this case so we're going to split it in the columns so the second the, the second uh, axis here is going to be the columns and this one we're going to uh, shard it in the rows so we're doing this and in jacks that is just using this sharding strategy and for the data, we're going to replicate it. And oddly enough, that's all we have to do. <laughs> so the compiler will do everything we said, like step by step. But we're just going to do some uh, debugging of the sharding here to verify that we get what we said we were getting. Uh, let me run this first. So OK. So first thing to note, we didn't change the program. The program is still the same. Like, like co code didn't change. The only thing that changed was the shardings. Uh, this is, I mean, thanks to the JAX compiler. Uh, uh, second thing, uh, let's see like what the intermediates are. So X, uh, we said we're going to, because we're doing more power, we're going to um, replicate it in this case, but W1 
is going to be sharded in the column dimension. Uh, y is the intermediate step y. Uh, just kind of as a recap. Y is supposed to be sharded in the column's dimension. And we can verify that Y is uh, sharded in the column dimension. W2, we said we were going to replicate it, uh, sharded in the rows dimension. It's in fact sharded in the rows dimension. And then Z, uh, Z should be, because we're doing a uh, multiple, should be uh, replicated on all devices. Uh, that's kind of the output which is a result of the all reduce. And yeah, this is what is happening. So it's just very fine that uh, JAX is implementing the optimal distributed algorithm. And if we look at the final shardings, they are the same as the input shardings. This means that JAX is respecting our restrictions. And we implemented like a model parallel uh, just by tweaking a little bit. And just kind of a to finish, you can do data parallel and model parallel at the same time. Uh, this is just, okay, we're going to choose like a mesh. The mesh is going to be 2 by 4. And we're going to say that the first dimension is going to be the data dimension. And the second is going to be the model dimension. We're going to use the same sharding strategy for the weights. So uh, what we saw previously. And but the data, instead of replicating it, we're going to shard it in the data dimension. The rest of the code stays the same. <laughs> and just to see some visualizations, we can see a very cool thing. Uh, if, if you have the data uh, sharded, uh, I mean re replicated, sharded in, in the first axis, and the weight sharded in the second axis, what you get is an intermediate that is sharded in, on all axes. So this is like, a, I don't know, like this times this equals this. And that is very good because it's putting it optimally in, in all the devices. And similar stuff, but the end result is uh, we, we're just checking the params, how they're sharded. They're sharded as, as we initially charge them, so the whole program after we run the, the train step uh, is uh, still keeping our, our like optimal shardings, and that is, uh, that is what we wanted. Um, so yeah, uh, like, if th this is a very dense topic, I thank you for like not sleeping. Uh, if you want to go deep into into what what is happening here, you can look at this uh, scaling ML model video. Uh, if you want, you can scan the QR to get access to the slides, which explains what I did in like a two-hour session. You can read the zero papers uh, from, I think they're from Microsoft, I don't remember. Uh, like, and, and you can also take a look at the JAX documentation of how to distribute, uh, like, distribute arrays and automatic parallelization. So this topic was, uh, is very dense and is very deep and it's really like a ton of engineering. Uh, but I hope, like, you at least remember kind of the, colorful shapes going into the devices and you get like a sensation of how uh, models are scaled uh, when you do stuff like uh, GPT-4 or PAM. These are the basic principles and you can do them very easily in JAX. Um, and that's it. If you have uh, questions uh, and also if you want to find me in. Okay, thanks Christian and please a huge applause for Christian.